Welcome to my Wednesday Lenten devotionals on the topic, Are Ye Able? Said the Master. I'm Pastor Steve Graves of Lafayette Presbyterian Church, and you are in my office. This is the way that I study and meditate and pray. Now, usually over to my left, out of your camera range, there is a little chancel area that I have with candles and crosses. And it also has a couple of photos of John Calvin and the uh, church in Geneva, uh, not out of idolat <laughs> idolatry, <laughs> but just to celebrate Presbyterian heritage. And of course, the crosses are a symbol of our faith in Jesus Christ. And the candles, very often I will turn off the lights here in the office and I'll light those candles. And uh, just with the light of the candles, I'll pray and meditate. And I have my very favorite menorah back here behind me. Perhaps you can see it. Often I will light those candles as well and use them as part of my Lenten devotions, my Advent devotions, or simply prayers anytime throughout the year. Now, these weekly devotionals are based on Matthew 20, verse 22, and the hymn, Are Ye Able, said the Master. And I have as my goal throughout this Lenten season to walk with you toward the glad Easter event. And how do I prepare? Very often when I'm studying a scripture, a hymn will come to mind. And I will even take out my guitar and sing it to myself. Now, America's Got Talent uh, has never called upon me to make a performance on stage. But remember that the Lord says to make a joyful noise. So I'm not ashamed of coming to the Lord in song. And somehow, very often, that music, those melodies and those words written by faithful Christians throughout the ages mean so much to me. I will share some of that today as well. Before I read the scripture, before I begin today, however, I want to share that our dear friend Phyllis Losa's grandson, Brandon, in Tampa, was in the middle of back surgery, and the surgeons had to stop there was something that took place that compelled them to put him into an induced coma. We don't know any of the other details. They are hoping they can bring him out of it tomorrow and finish the procedure. But certainly, this is the type of prayer need that weighs heavily on our hearts. So I wanted to make sure that this particular prayer need was spotlighted today. I remind you that we will have these devotionals every Wednesday, except during Holy Week, we will have instead a Monday Thursday communion service right here at Lafayette at five o'clock in the evening. And everyone who comes for that beautiful communion service will receive a very special gift from me. And on Easter Sunday, our schedule will be a little different. We will have a seven o'clock drive up sunrise service and an 11 o'clock traditional drive up worship service. So please keep that in mind. It's a wonderful way safely to celebrate the Easter season. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Lord, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, stole away to quiet places 
to pray, to meditate, to draw strength, and to prioritize plans and purposes. Guide us in our Lenten devotionals today that we might find ourselves free from the chaos and clutter of the world, that we might find our way and that our way would be your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I indicated, our scripture is from Matthew 20, verse 22. But Jesus answered, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? They said to him, we are able. We are able. Can you drink the cup that I will drink? Immediately when I studied that scripture for today's devotional, a song came to mind, a communion song. One bread, one body. Let me offer to you just the first verse of this wonderful communion song. Sorry for the feedback. When you go live, you don't anticipate things like your guitar jack coming out of the back of the guitar. Let me see if I can. There we go. I think I have it. <laughs> well, I think you can see that these devotionals are not designed to create the impression that someone who is high and above everyday foibles and sins is preaching down to you. This is very much you and I together, and we are striving in our imperfection to bring praise and glory to our Lord. But here is the song that came to mind as I was thinking about this particular verse. one bread, one body. It reminds us of the cup that Jesus will drink. Let's talk a little bit about that cup, shall we? Now, this particular verse, Matthew 20, verse 22, immediately follows James and John approaching Jesus through their mother, asking for a special place of honor at the right and the left of Jesus when he comes into his kingdom. Well, Jesus can see right away that they have no understanding. They don't know what they're asking, do they? And isn't it true that those things that you and I most often deem desirable are not the best for us. In fact, they can be the very worst things for us. 
spiritually, relationally, emotionally, and even physically. The desires of this world often look so good, but in the practice, they divert our attention away from the deeper aspects of life. In the short run, they can destroy relationships. And it is only by keeping our focus on the Lord that we find the deeper blessings of life. In praying for worldly things, we're apt to forget to count the cost that we must pay for their attainment. I think of Billy Graham, who lamented once that he had become so successful by worldly measures that he was no longer able to keep his front door unguarded. And he realized that certainly there must be some kind of failing that has brought him to a place where he has to separate himself from the people he has been called to serve. Every choice has a cost and every worldly prayer must be aware that there are trade-offs, consequences, and there are repercussions for everything worldly. Certainly, James and John did not understand that. And I was thinking also of the prosperity gospel. You know, those evangelists and teachers of the Christian faith, which pretty much suggest that God wants us all to be rich, you know, that Jesus wants us to prosper. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus wants us to have to struggle from meal to meal. But are we really called to go through life first class only? I don't think so. I think that's a total misunderstanding of Jesus and his gospel. How can we fail to hear Jesus teaching us about the crosses we must bear, the service that we are called to give, the sacrifices we are to make, and remember that Jesus and his followers, the Apostle Paul and others, stress in Gospels and Epistles that even suffering may be a gift of God's, not only to us, but to the people around us. But let us not simply judge others. If we look at our prayers, how often really do we stop and pray a prayer of adoration and praise? How often do we pray a prayer of thanksgiving? How often do we, unless we're in church on Sunday, pray a prayer of confession? I think for most of us, our prayers, at least many of them, are asking prayers, aren't they? Lord, give me this. Make this possible. Clear the path. Our prayers really are not so different from the prayer, from the request of James and John. I'd like you to picture, if you would, a medieval castle. And within this castle, there is prepared a feast and there are many invited guests around the table with the king. And all are privileged well beyond the masses. And the table is splendid. Now, I want you to imagine, if you will, that the king orders his stewards to fill every cup to the brim. And so around the table, 
go the stewards, filling every glass. The king raises his glass for a toast. What are the guests expecting? As they raise the glass to themselves, what are they hoping for? When the guests of honor at this feast raise their glass, it is a bitter and caustic brew. Imagine how they would react. Imagine how we would feel. Do you have any earthly idea what is the cup that Christ raised to his lips? God, in this scenario, would be the king, the master of the feast. And he has turned and passed a cup to his beloved son. But it is a cup of tears, a cup of sacrifice, a cup of suffering. And so Jesus perhaps bemused at the question of James and John, looks into their eyes and says, can you drink from this cup? We, the followers of Jesus Christ, those who fall into the same sorts of traps that did James and John, those of us who are limited in our understanding, those of us who have heard the gospel story so many times that some of the striking and terrible details of the cost of salvation are blunted for us. The question of Jesus Christ rings down through the ages. Can you drink from this cup? Let us share the chorus. Of are ye able, said the master. Our spirits are thine. Remold them, make us like the divine. Thy guiding radiance above us shall be a beacon to God, to love and loyalty. Let us come before God in prayer. Lord, we want to say we are able. And we remember that even though the disciples fell short of their bold words, they did eventually, when filled with the Spirit, when guided by the promised Comforter, when keeping their eyes fixed on the heavens, they did go out into the world preaching, teaching, baptizing, and healing. We may fall short, Lord. We may not understand fully. 
Our prayers may often be selfish, but we want to walk with you more closely. We want to hear you more clearly. And yes, Lord, we want to be able to drink the cup that you offer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me as we continue these Wednesday devotionals every Wednesday at 3 live on Facebook and then posted on our church website and on YouTube. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me through Facebook or through our website or our church email address lpctally at outlook.com. God bless you.